Today we're talking about the Sony 90mm G Macro Lens and it is sweet. Check it out. First, I'm James Lavish, welcome to my channel. And if you're looking for photo and video tips and tricks, gear insights and reviews, subscribe to my channel below where I post a new video every week. Today we're talking about this bad boy, the Sony 90mm G Macro Lens. I've been playing around with it for a few weeks now and I'm gonna tell you what I love about it, what I don't love about it, and whether I think you should get one for yourself. You can check out my work at James Lavish on Instagram or on my website, jameslavish.com. I'll link them both below. Okay, let's get to it. First of all, the build quality in this lens is pretty solid. It comes in at one of the third pounds, which puts it squarely between the 85 millimeter 1.4 G Master and the 85 millimeter 1.8 lenses. It's made of metal and composite, and it's really a pretty lens. It has a really great feel and look to it, kind of like holding an old Leica or a Voigtlander. It's got a focus limiter switch, which goes from 0.28 meters to 0.5 meters, or 0.5 meters to infinity, or full, and that is really helpful if you're doing macro photography so you don't have to go such a long distance when you're trying to manually focus for something. Or even if you're in autofocus, it'll prevent the lens from searching and searching for focus. It has an OSS switch, which makes it easy when you put it on a tripod as you shouldn't have your stabilization on then. Also, the focus ring itself can switch into manual mode, which makes it super easy so you don't have to look around for buttons if you already have something framed up or you're close to an insect and you don't want to scare it away. One of my favorite features is this focus magnification scale, which tells you the exact distance and magnification right on the lens. I love how it looks too. It has a focus hold button right on the lens here, and that can be reprogrammed to just about anything you want in the Sony system. I usually reprogram this button for eye autofocus on my other Sony lenses, but in this case, I'd probably just leave it as focus hold. The filter diameter is pretty small at 62 millimeters, so if you need an ND or polarizer, it's great. The smaller filters are cheaper. This lens has fantastic detail with maximum magnification ratio of one to one for macro shots, and it's super sharp from corner to corner. The autofocus was okay. I played around with it a little bit for some macro video work, but you probably wouldn't use it that much for macro work anyways, as you really wanna dial in that shallow depth of field with manual focus. The bokeh and background blur is fantastic in macro, super smooth for separating the subject from the background, though not quite as silky smooth as the 85 millimeter 1.4 G Master, though that's arguably one of, if not the best portrait lenses out there. So I'm curious, what are you thinking about using this lens for? Pure macro or product photography, or maybe detail work at weddings, or even portraits? More on that later, but Drop a comment below and let me know what you're thinking about using this lens for. I'd be interested to know. Okay, now what I don't love about this lens. So it says that it's weather and dust resistant, which is nice, but it's not weather sealed. And you can see there's no gasket here. Also, to be honest, I originally got this lens thinking I could replace my 85 millimeter 1.4 G Master for portraits. I mean, they're about the same 90 millimeter, 85 millimeter focal length. But when I started taking portraits with this thing, I realized that it's razor sharp and pretty unforgiving, if you know what I mean. I don't want a portrait of me taken with it. So I really don't think I'd recommend this for portraits. I know that there are some portrait photographers out there that use it, but it's pretty unforgiving and you better be in a serious, serious beauty field for that. So if you're a wedding photographer and you're thinking about using it for both macro and portraits at a, at a wedding, I'd honestly think twice about it. Maybe go rent one, check it out, use it on your family first. As for vignetting, there is some on its widest apertures, but it usually falls off right about f4, f5.6, so it's not that big of a deal. There is a small amount of chromatic aberration in super contrasty areas with bright colors, but it can be easily fixed in Lightroom. It's not a deal breaker by any means. Okay, so now the question is, should you buy this lens? Well, if you're a product or a macro photographer, Absolutely. Hands down, this thing is amazing. Shallow depth of field, razor thin, and super sharp for those detail shots. Incredible. But if you do portraits, I would probably recommend that you go rent this lens and check it out on some portraits before you buy it. But if you're a wedding photographer, I still think you should have this in your bag for those detail shots. I mean, it's incredible. But you should probably have another lens to go with it for that portrait work. 
And if you already have that 85 millimeter G Master, well, you could get this lens and the 85 millimeter 1.8 for just about the same price. You'd lose about a third of stop and light and a little bit different bokeh. But then the question is, are your clients really gonna know the difference? I mean, you might know the difference and maybe that's enough for you to keep the 1.4, but it's a thought. Okay, so for those of you who like metrics, I put together a little scorecard. To me, you're getting a pretty solid deal here. It's rated as the sharpest Sony lens of their whole lineup. The images are just fantastic, especially those detail shots. I mean, I could count the hairs on the bees I was shooting. It's just a great lens, and I'm gonna keep it for product and commercial work. Okay, that's it. If you like this video, please hit that like button below as it really does help. And if you haven't subscribed already, it would be super appreciated. Let me know in the comments below what other lenses you might want me to review. And I'll see you in the next video.